Hello, and this is a YouTube class that is dedicated for the LCD. I call this journey to LCD because you can repeat this as many times as you want. We're gonna work on... Uh, oh, first of all, my name is Asem. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Please, subscri please subscribe. Yes, and maybe hit the like button. I, I'm very new to YouTube, so do whatever you want and you think I deserve a like button or not. And anyways, so we're going to start with opening the posterior chain of the body. We're going to work on our calves, feet, calves, hamstrings, butt, uh, the backside of the body. I mean, the spine, the neck. And then we're going to strengthen some shoulders and uh, get into a little bit of core compression and attempt the L seat with the blocks. And that's why you may need to have a couple of blocks and then attempt the L seat without the blocks. Also, for this class, you probably will need a um, small towel because uh, sometimes it's really difficult to sit on your in your low squat with the heels down. So this is why we're gonna place our heels on and uh, rest in that position. Let's get started. And socks go. Oof. So since we're gonna hold our body weight on our hands and wrists and uh, fingers, we're gonna start the warm up with the arms. And uh, let's prepare our hands uh, coming into the tabletop position. It doesn't really matter if your hips above the knees or not. And from here, we're gonna place the entire surface of the palms like if, if your fingertips are coming off or if the middle side of the fingers are coming off, press all of the palms into the mat. And from here, we're gonna try and lift the palms while leaving the four knuckles on the floor. So the big thumbs are coming off. All of the surface of the fingers are trying to press into the mat and release. This is gonna hit really badly. I mean, goodly at some point as well into the forearms. So this is kind of a good thing also for the handstand. Let's do this couple of more times, pressing the entire surface of the fingers, leaving the knuckles on the floor, big toes, big fingers coming off and release. One more time, holding it here, breathing it out. <laughs> Remember, you can also challenge yourself coming into the plank Oh, that is not day for me. And releasing. Let's do last time. I lied before. Yes, I'm gonna lie more. <laughs> Pressing the entire surface of the fingertips. Maybe finding a little bit of movement. And release. Shake it off if you need to. Sometimes it helps a lot. And now we're gonna come again to the same position. This time we're gonna place the, the top side of our palms. Now the sole of the palms are facing towards the chest. And from here, we're gonna try and rotate our elbows. So lay elbows, eyes pointing forward. Now towards ourselves. And a little bit more. You can also bend your elbows as much as you want. What I want from here as well to push slightly a little bit more so your shoulders are not depressed you're not hanging down but they are slightly active let's do the last one and release a little bit of shake Ooh, maybe a little bit of i don't know how they call this but i see i feel like it, they call it uh, flashlight so let's do a little bit of flashlight forward flashlight up to the side, do it as fast as possible, super fast, even faster, and release. Now we're gonna come, I'm gonna face forward so that you can see me. We're gonna try and bring the palms 90 degrees facing forward, and now top of the palm face, facing forward. 90 degrees, fingertips all together. This is really difficult. Inhaling deeply, exhaling as well, also deeply. Now we will try to change position of the elbows, eyes of the elbows pointing towards each other 
and we're gonna do the same thing. And last one. Try and make it super active and shake it off again. Last one is that we're gonna bring our palms into the fist and rotate it out while keeping the elbows fixed and shoulders fixed. So we're not doing this with the upper body. We're trying to isolate this movement strictly in the wrist and the other side. This feels so good, so bad and so good at the same time for me. And release. And for the next one, I'm gonna seat myself to the side so that you can see what I'm exactly doing. We're gonna stretch our palms, our arms in front of us, super straight. And now we're gonna flip the palms so they're, they're facing towards the ceiling. The shoulders are not lifted, the shoulders are not depressed. We're trying to keep it neutral, as if you would be standing. And from here, we're gonna bend from the elbows, but not touching the shoulders. And release. Only the elbows, not touching the shoulders. And one more. Inhale to bend, to hold it. We're not touching the, el the shoulders. I know you can, but we are now focusing on the elbows and release. Now for the next one, we're gonna place the tips of the palms of the fingertips on the shoulders and we're gonna rotate our shoulders out to touch, out to touch. Try to isolate this movement without bending for my hyper flexible people. Try to not involve your spine into the work and the reverse. We're gonna do this three times and get into the neck and release. Now for the next one, I'm gonna again sit myself so that you see me straight forward. Again, keeping ourselves neutral, not slouched, not to bend it, we're trying to let the shoulders be wherever they want to be at the moment. And we are gonna move the neck without moving the shoulders. So we're gonna inhale, bend it on the right, Exhale, come up. Inhale, bend it to the right, exhale. Inhale, come up. Exhale, on the left. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. And notice I'm not doing anything with my shoulders. Inhale, exhale. And last one. So we're gonna do the same thing with inhalation and exhalation, but we're gonna twist. Inhale, twist to right. Inhale, twist to left. Inhale and exhale, twist to right. Inhale to center, exhale to left. Inhale to center, exhale to right. Not involving the shoulders. Now we're gonna combine all of that with the twisting and the Moving the neck circle ways, avoiding the movement of the shoulders. Maybe I'm moving my shoulders because they do have hyperactive neck muscles. But be really mindful of that. On the inhale, we come up. On the exhale, we drop down. And last one. Hop. Now down with the neck and the shoulders. We're gonna do one exercise for our chest opening. I call it, come give me a hug. So we're gonna open the chest out as if you want to, some, to hug someone and allow yourself to bend if you need, if your body needs that, but focus more on the chest as well. So as you bend, also open through the chest. We don't want to do any hypermobility through the lower back. Ideally, you would be completely straight with neutral back, ribs, lower ribs tuck in and you open, come give me a hug. Open, come give me a hug. So be mindful of that. Nothing really bad will happen, but this will only intensify the stretch. So come give me a hug, open and release. Come give me a hug open. I'm gonna move. Upper. Inhale, exhale. 
inhale, exhale. This is really a ballistic way to stretch the chest. Also, if you're someone like me and your neck moves, be also mindful of that. Nothing really bad will happen, it's just that you want to be controlling all of that. And last one, we're gonna hold. Come give me a hug, come give me a hug. <laughs> Keeping the chest open, maybe lower ribs to draw down and exhale and inhale. I would wish to do that with my nose, but since I speak, I'm forced to do that with my mouth. Now that we finished with our upper part of the upper body, we're gonna move to the spine. Coming into the four tabletop on our fours, we're gonna drop our chest, look forward, slightly bend through the lower back if you're hypermobile. If you're someone who sits a lot, you probably want to push it further and slightly bend your elbows, point them towards your pelvis. And from here, pushing the floor away actively, elbows, eyes looking to each other. And you want to round. And let's do this one more time. Inhale. If I say inhale and exhale. <laughs> and on the exhale, we're gonna push the floor away, round the upper back, super, 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 super round. And you want to inhale the belly in. Not the inhale, but you want to exhale the belly in. And <sighs> releasing, dropping the chest, looking forward, allowing the spine bend naturally. And exhale, you want to exhale the belly fully round and the scapula is almost on the sides of the body, almost in the armpit. Like, picture that. I know it's impossible. And drop. Last one. Let's flex the spine, tuck the chin under. Hmm. This feels good. And now from here, we're gonna move our body to the left, dropping from the left to the cow. And from the cow, we're gonna move our body to the right, to the angry cat, meow. And <laughs> let's move these circle things around. Go one more time. Connecting all of that with breathing, with the rib cage, and to the other side. This is spinal movement, but spine and rib cage are so much interconnected. And ooh, from here we're gonna place our feet into the mat, come into the downward facing dog, adjust if you need to adjust, pedal your feet out, and you want to press your palms into the mat. So you want to elevate those scapulas like in the angry cat. And once you find the stillness, keep pressing and elevating those shoulders up, breathing through the belly, and then we're gonna come on, the, on our tippy toes. We're gonna bend our knees and we're gonna round the spine and move forward into the um, kind of modified plank. And we're gonna bend the knees and drop the chest. Move it all the way back into the downward facing dog. One more time. <laughs> Remember, keeping the knees bent is the key for the safeness of the movement. Meaning if you're a hypermobile person, you probably will use a lot of your hypermobile places and you want to avoid that. Okay, let's do this one more time. I'm gonna lie to you a lot in this class. <laughs> and waving around, adding the neck, uh, pedaling the feet out and coming back again onto our shins. So for the next one, we're gonna do the tabletop position again. This is gonna be the pose that's gonna show more in, the, in, in this class. But from here, we want to make it um, not regular tabletop. So usually you want to press your palms into the mat, both of the palms, but this time, keeping the same position, we're gonna lift the right, left palm and, you know, usually they would tell you, keep your shoulders aligned. But this time, no, let your shoulders drop 
And from this position, you want to open the chest towards the, for me, for the camera, but you want to open to the left. And again, dropping like the bottom position, the end range, and we're gonna press it up. And remember, you want to keep that natural curve of the lower back. We don't want to tuck anything under. So this is, this is the natural position of your body. This is natural curves. That is absolutely all right. And we're gonna hold here. Hold here and breathe into the ribs. The ribs that are opening, the ribs that are squeezing. And this probably would feel a lot in the right shoulder blade, in the right shoulder cuff. And uh, this is a good prep for the strength work of the shoulders. Now the same thing, we're gonna drop ourselves to the left and open to the right. Remember, keep that little curve, not hyper curved, but tiny curve of the lower back. And we want to inhale, open to right, Exhale to drop. Ah. Inhale. And remember, you want to also retract the belly. And exhale. Ah. It's okay if your ribs flare out. As long as the curve of the lower back is slightest. Remember, for hypermobile people, this may look something like that. We don't want that, obviously. We want to be more on the left shoulder. And last one and release. And now we finished with all of the upper body prep, we're gonna move into the lower body prep and we're gonna start with our feet. So coming into your kneeling position, place your feet on your toes. This for some people may feel a little bit too harsh. So remember you have a block to place underneath your knees and stay here. If this is too difficult, remember you can also support yourself with arms or to take these blocks under your arms and put more weight more on the arms rather than your feet. Anyways, I'm gonna place myself like this. And you want to keep your feet parallel towards each other. So we, we don't want anything happening like that or anything happening like that. And the reason is that because I want to focus more on the plantar fascia, especially the line of the big toe and the line to the, uh, to the heel. If this is already too much for you, stay here and inhale deeply and exhale completely because this could be already a big stressor for the feet. But if you want something a little bit more intense, and if you're a total psycho like myself, place your palms on top of those heels to add more body weight onto that. And from here, we're gonna think of paralleling those feet, stretching more that line of the big toe. <sighs> and if you want to make it hyperactive, not hypermobile, but active, we're gonna from this position come and press the big toes and all other toes that are touching the mat Press it and lift the knees out. Press it and lift the knees up. This is gonna be something really great for the people that suffer syndromes of like plantar fasciitis, as this is not only stretches the tissue, but also strengthens it. And last one, and release. This can be really tough. So remember we can yeah, we can shake this out. Ah, it feels so good. Now for the next one, we're gonna move into the calf stretching. Let's get into the single calf stretching. Sitting on one shin on the right side, we're gonna place the, the entire foot flat on the floor on the left side. And from here, we're gonna try and lean on that knee as much as possible. Remember, if your heel lifts up, this is no big issue. We can place a uh, towel underneath the heel. You can make it as high as possible. And from here, we're gonna try and bring those knees past the toes, past far beyond the toes. But at the same time, you want to keep the connection of the heel. And rocking back and forward. I think I'm gonna use 
adjust my heel. <sighs> Inhaling, exhaling deeply through the nose and moving the sides. So I'm moving to the right side. Again, leaning the full body weight, <sighs> maybe staying here. It's okay if you round your upper back or the neck. This is not crucial. Actually, the natural squat is with flexed spine, flexed spine. So this is really natural thing to happen. Maybe rocking and pulsing a little bit here and release. Now we're gonna come into Malasana, but Malasana with a little bit of modif modification. If you're someone who can't sit or find it really uncomfortable to sit in the low squat with the heels down, there is two options you can do. Placing the towel underneath your heels and finding your low squat, or placing a yoga block underneath your butt, which is also fine. Remember, listen to your body and whatever is comfortable for you, go for it. But what I'm gonna do now is that we, I will ask you to point your toes inwards and to point your knees inwards. This will, this is, <laughs> this is gonna feel a little bit <laughs> uncomfortable and probably very limiting. So maybe I will, I'm gonna take the towel and place it. No, I'm gonna take a yoga block. <laughs> yes. So we're adding a little bit of internal rotation to hit those tissues of the calves from all of the angles. And we're gonna rock ourselves back and forth. Oops, I'm probably moving the mic. Maybe I'm reaching forward. This feels so good though. Oh, ho, 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 ho. And we're gonna now point the toes out and open those heels, open those knees out as well. Same thing, we're gonna rock forward. Inhaling, exhaling. It's okay if your heel lifts up. And maybe moving those knees one at a time. And release. Finishing our little warm up, lower parts of the lower rims. So now we're gonna move into the hips a little bit. And we're gonna start with the um, half butterfly pose. So coming from the forward fold, we're gonna move left foot, left heel towards the groin, but at the same time, the right foot is very active. We want to flex the ankle, we want to point the fingers towards the ceiling, and we want to press that knee into the mat. Now here, as you open the left hip out, there is a tendency to, for your pelvis to move to the left as well. So we want to intentionally try and close that hip keep the pelvis towards the front. This will do a lot of activation through the right hip, left hip. And from here, we're gonna hold the toes. An option, if you're a total psycho again, an option to bring it into the crisp of your hip on the right side. I'm gonna go a little bit gentle today and I'm gonna do with my foot flat on the mat. And from here, we're gonna inhale, bring the knee towards the chest. Exhale, drop it down and push it slightly. Remember, we want to point that pelvis forward this whole time, making it super active. Exhaling, lowering all the way down. Inhaling, bring it up. A little bit of hatha elements. And now we're gonna take that knee and gently tap it into the floor or maybe in the air, moving it up and down, up and down, really quickly, but be gentle. If that hurts, don't go into the wide amplitudes. You want to take it smaller range, shaking it off, getting a little bit ballistic here. And last one, we're gonna push it into the floor and point the pelvis forward. We want to point it forward, twist it and release. Now the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna move myself so that you see me. Heel to the groin, right knee goes up, inhale, and exhale. Pelvis points forward, exhale, 
Inhale, exhale. Left leg is active, exhale. The spine is neutral. So we don't want to go hyper bending and we don't want to super rounding. And exhale. Now exhale, inhale and exhale. And now we're gonna take that knee and shake it. Shake it out. If this feels a little bit too weird on your knees, go gentle, go small amplitude. If you're fine, you can even hear some voice flapping, some noise. And release, we're gonna press that knee to the floor and point the pelvis forward. Breathing deeply. And release. Now for the next one, we're gonna come into the full butterfly pose. We'll see your feet together, heels close to groin. There are people that prefer to keep the knees a little bit forward so that they can touch the chest. If you're, if you if you prefer this way, then please go ahead do so. I myself prefer my heels really close to groin. And from here, we're gonna hold on to our toes, interlacing our hands, straight spine. Again, not hyper bending, not very rounding. We want to be neutral, as if you're standing. And we're gonna move our Knees up and down as a flying butterfly. Listen to my voice. I'm moving to the right. <laughs> and coming again into the center if you move to the right. Inhaling, press those knees down and pull yourself gently. Holding here. Remember, this is the position where you still want to bring those knees as low as possible. This is not resting position. And inhale, come up. Now the next one, we're gonna try and reach forward with the round spine while pressing those knees down. If you're someone who can fold all the way down, please do so. As you can see, this is not the position where I find it possible. Knees goes down this whole time and you breathe into your nose. Inhale, slowly come up and we're almost done with our warm up. So we're gonna move now into the same position of the forward fold. Now we're gonna, what I really like to do is to gently bend the right leg, placing the ankle, the left ankle onto that right leg and grabbing with your elbows, the inner side of the elbow, your foot and now coming straight into the rock baby thing. Now the right leg goes straight again, super active, toes, toes pointing out and here we want to inhale and bring the chest towards the shin. I put a lot of cream on my feet today so this is really slippery and we want to again there is a tendency to open the hip, but we want to close that hip. We want to inhale, and I say exhale, and we're gonna rock gently. We're gonna rock it gently from side to side. If you want to int intensify this, move a little bit the foot towards the left. So we want to move the entire thing towards the left slightly. Be really gentle. Support your knee and release. Again, bending the right knee, placing it the same way we came in. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Closing the hip, inhaling chest towards the shin. Exhaling completely. Left leg is active. We want to rock it out. As if this is your baby. This is my baby. This is my hairy baby. Anyways, rocking it from side to side. Maybe moving a little bit now towards the right. Rock it out. 
rocking it one more time, maybe finding stillness and releasing the same way we came into this position. Now for the next one, we're gonna come into our malasana or low squat. Remember an option to sit on the block or to place the towel underneath your heels. And from here, we're gonna strengthen our, strengthen our knees and come into this forward fold. Rock, doll forward fold, moving from side to side. Maybe coming slowly and gently with the bent knees into the spinal wave. And dropping all the way down again into the rock doll. Oh, I forgot my heel, my ring. And from here, we're gonna drop again into the squat. Look forward, it's okay to round the spine. And one more time, all of that, maybe skipping the spinal wave and simply moving from squat to forward fold to squat. If you want to challenge yourself a little bit more, keep the connection of the belly and the thighs belly and the thighs wow this feels a lot belly to the thighs and release congratulations we are done with our warm up now we're gonna move into the opening the posterior chain of the body and we're gonna start this little sequence from the downward facing dog coming to the downward facing dog finding that position it's not resting position we are pressing the palms away from ourselves lifting those shoulder blades and rotating them out and from here we're gonna bring that left right leg up toes pointing towards the floor we want to toes point towards the floor because we want to keep that hip closed and from here we're gonna kick into the ceiling kick into the ceiling kick into the ceiling one more inhale kick inhale kick this whole time we want to keep the chest towards the knee towards the left knee and last one is gonna be to hold hold here pressing the left heel towards the mat the knee is straight as much as possible it's okay if it's bent and release because we all have our different practices. Now moving towards the left side, we're gonna bring that heel up, toes pointed towards the mat, and we want to kick towards the ceiling as much as possible. It will probably will make your torso to come closer to the right leg. The heel is on the floor and release shake it out walk it out or maybe come onto your shins or maybe rest ah, find a little bit of breathing if this was too much maybe child pose this is also an option but now we're gonna move into the plow the reverse the reverse forward fold coming to onto our back and from here if the plow is not in your practice please start really small knees to chest maybe placing a yoga block underneath your hips and then knees to chest maybe this is already a lot remember what I want you to is to listen to your body but if plow pose is in your practice we're gonna start with our palms down or with our palms crossed, interlaced. And from here, we're gonna bring, wait, let me move myself into the middle. And we're gonna bring our toes behind our head. An option to keep your knees bent or maybe your knees bent and on your forehead. The microphone is so close though. And another option is to place a yoga block underneath your toes 
or to keep your knees straight and toes pointed towards the ceiling. From here, an option to interlace your fingertips and to press more through your shoulders. Breathing slowly into the ribcage. I'm gonna whisper here because the microphone is really close. And slowly we're gonna press our palms again into the mat and make our way down super slowly. Just to challenge ourselves a little bit more today. And coming up gracefully or ungracefully, we're gonna work on our forward fold to what is the greatest way to incorporate the posterior chain of the body is the active forward fold. So what do I mean for that? Is that we're gonna point our toes, there is no crying with that, and we're gonna round our upper back. So we're gonna do the opposite what all of the yoga bloggers are telling you today. So we're gonna sit straight up, finding a little bit of hinge at the hips, keeping the spine completely neutral, and we're gonna press those knees down. If this could be already too much for you, then stay here. If you want to add a little bit more of your back, then we're gonna tuck the chin under, and maybe keeping all of that here at the hips and the lower back same, we're gonna flex through the chest. So we're not flexing through the back, through the low back. We're keeping this position, the hinge, and the round upper back. If this is already a lot for you, stay here. An option to reach your arms forward and lower all the way down with your arms. Keep reaching. Palms facing towards each other. And hold here. Think of your crown of the head as if the crown of the head wants to touch the floor. And slowly, with the inhale, coming all the way up. So what it does to you, it works a lot with the ability to flex the spine. As the hypermobile yogis, we tend to lose that ability because of the, all of the bending that is happening in our practices. So let's do this one more time. We're gonna sit upright, hinging from the hips. We're not hinging from the lower back. Hinging from the hips, lower back is neutral. And from here, we're gonna press those knees down, toes pointing forward, and we're gonna tuck the chin under. Now we want to round the shoulders, round the upper back, and keep hinging here and reaching forward. Keep reaching forward, keep tucking the chin under. If you're someone who practices a lot of back bends, you will benefit a lot from this one, as this is exactly what it does the undo the work of the back bends. And with the inhalation, slowly coming all the way up to sit upright. For the next one, we're gonna stand up all the way. You will probably not see my head because of the position of the camera. An option to find an assistant of the wall and hold on to it with your palm, with your forearm, maybe leaning with your body. But I would really, suggest you to do that without any uh, supporting systems around you. So we're gonna do the big toe hold, but we're gonna do it more active and more isometric. And coming, do, coming into your big toe hold uh, the way you prefer, I usually like to bring and stretch my leg out. And from here, we're gonna let it go and point the toes. And we're gonna hold here with super straight knee. What I want you to focus is that you, you are not crouching, you are not bending the opposite leg, but you want to unbend the opposite leg and you, as if you want to open the chest. Think of bending 
we are not, no, we are no longer holding the neutral spine. <sighs> we are bending. Now let's do the same thing on the opposite side. Coming into the position. Anyways, you prefer stretching that leg and then pointing the toes out. Remember, you want to imagine your rib cage being as open as possible. Like whatever the things I told you before to rounding the spine, we want not to round. We want to bend it and use more of the deeper layers of the core and release. Now, while we rest, let's come into our low lunge. Now with the low lunge, we're gonna let the knees pass the toes and heel is on the floor. So go as far as possible with the heel on the floor. Once your heel lifts, you've gone too far, then come down, bring that heel down, press it into the mat, and we're gonna try and lift the back knee off the floor and release. Off the floor and release. If you want, if you want to put less intensity on the lower back, then probably fold a little bit forward. This is a great way to open actively through the front side of the body. As we used a lot of flexion of the hips, we want to undo the job and change it. Same thing, knee past the toes, heel on the floor, glued hyperactively. And from here, we're gonna try and lift the back knee off and release. Off and release. One more. It's okay if your back leg is not completely straight. What matters is the attention, is the attempt. And last one, release. Now let's do the same thing one more time. But we're gonna add a little bit of modifications now. Come into your downward facing dog. Remember pressing those shoulders out and up. We're gonna lift the right leg. This time we're gonna open that hip and we're gonna bounce it for 10 times as high as possible, keeping the left knee on the mat. And last one to hold. Keep pressing your chest towards the knee, opening through the chest, through the hamstrings, and release. Shake it out. If you need to, we're gonna go straight into the left leg. 10 times, kicking all the way out. It's okay if your shoulders open <laughs> because we are working on the hamstrings and they are <laughs> from all the angles. And last one to hold. Remember keeping that knee flat on the floor and release. Next one is the plat pose. We're gonna hold here a little bit longer. Coming onto our back. Wait, let me move a little bit forward. And we are gonna come into the plow pose, pressing. Let me remove my microphone here. So, we're gonna interlace our fingertips and press the shoulders more into the yoga mat, finding more depth in the pose. Legs are super active. Toes pointing out and as if you want to reach further away with your toes. Remember, if this is too much, you can bend your knees and place it on your forehead or place something under your toes. And holding here, breathing, maybe to open your feet out and close them. And slowly we're gonna place the palms down, press them into the mat, and gently, wait, let me remove my microphone, here. And gently we're gonna move slowly, vertebra by vertebra, placing all the way down into the mat. Now for the next one, we're gonna come into our active forward fold. Let's do this a little bit more intense as we did all of that things. Now placing those toes, pointing them forward, we're gonna find a little bit neutral position here, hinging from the hips, lowering your chest, rounding your shoulders, and reaching forward. We want to 
keep that compression between your belly and the hips. An option to place something between here, like a towel, and squeeze that towel. Holding here for five, four, two, three, and one, and releasing. Let's do this a little bit more. And again, hinging from the hips, pressing those knees down, rounding and reaching, compressing, holding here and breathing into the backside of your ribs. Pressing your belly into the towel and release, come up. Let's do this one last time. Toes pointing, rounding and reaching, compressing. Holding here, reaching your toes, reaching your fingertips in the same direction. Ooh, a little bit of shaking. And release. <sighs> Remove that towel. We're going to move into the big toe hold. Coming again. You probably don't see my face. <laughs> and uh, yeah, reaching your big toe, stretching your foot out and pointing those toes. Remember, if this is too much, it's okay to drop a little bit or to come. What I want you to do here is to keep that leg super straight and open chest. Both of the legs are straight and the chest is reaching forward. So let's do the other leg. Stretching that leg, pointing those toes and hold here, breathing into the places of stress. And release. Let's do this on the other side one more time. Remember an option to hold on something if this is if this is a little bit too much on your balancing. We want to open the chest. Hold here for five, four, three, two, and one. Now the other side. Stretching those legs again. Last time, make it your best. This is your last. We're not gonna be back here. And release. <laughs> Bravo, shake it out. We're gonna come straight into the split squat, toes far beyond your, um, toes far beyond your uh, knees, far beyond your toes. And the back leg goes, oh, knee up and down. Up, hold it for five, four, three, two, and one. Now move, move your foot forward, adjust as you need to, and reach for the back leg to come to the quad stretch. Whew. An option to point the toes or to flex the ankle, whatever is calling you now. Or to move your chest back and forth. I mean, pointing the shoulders square and to side to get all the sides of the quads and changing the other glove. Good leg goes forward and we're gonna lift those toes up, the knees up and down. Up and down. There is connection between the hamstrings and calves on the front leg and we want it to be this way and release. Adjusting as you need to, reaching for the back leg and stretching, moving the shoulders forward towards the mat and opening them. Ah, this is so relaxing. And forward. And last one. And pump. Now we're done with our lower body. Let's move into the shoulder strengths. Remember, uh, we're gonna do the plank pose, plank shrugs, shoulder shrugs, an option to hold onto your blocks and do it from your knees. So we want to point the eyes of the elbows towards each other and we want to round that upper back. And from here, we're gonna drop the shoulders and push the floor away. So we want to meet the scapulas behind and separate the scapulas. Scapulas are meeting and separating. If this is too easy, come into your plank. Let's do that from the plank. Dropping and lifting. 
dropping and lifting. Shoulder blades meet and separate. Meet and separate. Meet and separate as you round and release. Now we're gonna hold the plank for one minute. If you're feeling too much stress on your wrist while doing your plank, keep hold on the, uh, the blocks. But now I'm gonna set a timer and we're gonna hold a plank for one minute. I will be telling you the cues and we're gonna make it interesting one minute so it looks like 15 seconds. So come into the plank, timer is off. Timer is already set, I mean. And we're rounding the shoulders. We're separating the shoulder blades. We're retracting the belly. And from here, if you're feeling any discomfort through your lower back, an option to bend those knees or to come to quadruplet. Anyways, 20 seconds pass. We're gonna come into the quadruplet. It's like a tabletop with round back, but with the knees floating. And we're gonna step those knees back. Hold here, again. Stepping into the quadruplet and stepping back. Now, 40 seconds. Last time, we're gonna come into the quadruplet and from here, we want to come onto the left arm only. So we're lifting the right arm and we're opening the chest towards the right and lifting. If this is too much, you can drop the knees, lift the chest, lift the left arm and look back and release. And one minute is done. I told you it's gonna be interesting one minute. So I'm gonna set the timer out, away. And we're gonna move into our modified Navasana. So we're gonna find a support behind your back with your palms. It doesn't matter how you place your palms with your fingertips, pointing, whatever. And from here, we're gonna open the chest, find a little bit of back bend through your lower back, through your chest as well. And we're gonna bend those elbows and lean back a little bit. From here, we're gonna squeeze those legs together point those fingertips, toes, and we're gonna come into the uh, parallel, the shins. Or an option to lift those toes out. Let's do this for five times. One, two, three, four, and four fifths. We're gonna hold here for five seconds. One, two, three, four, and five. Whew, I'm shaking today. And we're gonna come into the single leg lift. So we're gonna press into the mat from our seated position with toes pointed. An option to press into the yoga blocks. As far as you press your fingertips closer to your feet, the more challenging it is going to be to lift for you. So I'm gonna press my fingertips right next to my knees. And from here, we're gonna round the upper back, a little bit of tuck chin here. And we're gonna lift for five times and a few to hold. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. The other leg. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. And release, flap it out. Finding a little bit of movement here. And now we're gonna, while we rest, we're gonna find Reverse tabletop, again, fingers pointing to whatever direction they want to point. An option to find a little bit back bend or stay here. Or if you want to find a little bit of more posture things and work on the rib cage, we're gonna remove one arm and twist towards the opposite arm. And release. <sighs> Removing one arm, twist, towards the opposite arm. In order to twist, you will have to rotate your elbow in. So the back side of the elbow is looking up. Hop. And release. Whew. So we're gonna do the same thing one more time, but without but. <laughs> so shoulder shrugs, Remember an option to hold onto the block or to do it on your knees. I'm gonna come into the plank. Um, and from here, we're gonna round and drop the shoulders. Round, push to separate the shoulder blades. Drop the shoulder blade. Separate, meet. Separate, meet. 
five, four, three, two, and one. Whew, and release. This whole time of the shrugging, we want to keep your elbows straight. So be mindful if uh, you have hyperextension of the elbows. Now let's move into the plank for one minute again. And let's make it into resting. So holding the plank here with your upper back round because we want to work on the shoulders. Uh, remember an option to quadruplet. And from here of the plank, maybe we want to separate those feet as wide as the mat. And from here, shifting the weight onto the right, holding onto the fingertips of the left or lifting the left arm, dropping the left arm down, same, moving or shifting and down. It's okay if your pelvis moves because we want to focus on your shoulders. This is not about core today. 45 seconds. An option to do the same thing on your knees or <laughs> clicking and clacking. And last one, release. Bravo, one minute is done and we made the planks as much more interesting as it could be. Setting the timer aside. So we're gonna do now the Navasana. Let's do the Navasana for five times and five hold. Remember of all the notes I gave you, one, two, three, four. We're not crouching because otherwise we start using the superficial belly and we want to hold here for five seconds. Whew. And release. Remember if you have any lower back discomfort, back off a little bit, maybe not too high, maybe hold here. Because when the iliopsoas gets uh, too tense, it becomes uh, inefficient. And here we're gonna do the five times of two lifts. One, two, three, four, five. And hold here for five seconds. And release. The other leg. Two, three, four, Hold here for five seconds and release. Shake it out. Let's do this one more time. One, two, three, four, and hold here, release. Last one, the other leg. Two, three, four, five, and release. Shake it out. Remember, while we rest, let's find one last tabletop. Whew. And maybe seat your belt, butt closer to hips, finding slightest bend through the shoulders. Ah. And again, one last time. Congratulations. We're done with the shoulders. We're gonna move now to attempting the L seat itself. Now you will need a couple of yoga blocks. I wish mine would be more stable, made of cork, but what we have is what we have. From here, we're gonna uh, find our lower, our forward fold with toes pointed, with knees uh, super straight. And we want to round our, our upper back. Um, placing the yoga block somewhere in between your hip and the knee, somewhere in the middle of that length. And we're gonna press into the palms. I wish this could be more stable, but press into the palms and lift the I'm gonna just change it to more stable side. Now we're gonna press to the palms and lift the butt and release. Lift the butt and release. Lift the butt and release. Maybe on the last time, lift the butt, lift the toes. Hold here and release. Okay, let's do one more time. <laughs> lift the butt and then the toes and release. Um, now that you want to challenge yourself a little bit more, let's lift all of those things together. So toes and the butt together. Folding down, inhale, and lift. Release, folding down again, finding the depth, and lift, and release. 
Let's do this two more times. And lift. Release to fold. And lift. Hold it here. And now if you want to find more challenge, you can stay, remember, you can stay with the blocks as much as it's possible. And there is nothing bad about those things. Uh, it's actually a smaller steps you take, the further you go. And, uh, but I'm gonna show um, without the block, if you are someone who actually wants to do that without the block, you can do without the block. And uh, the same drills that we did, lifting the butt first and then the toes. So let's start with that. Folding down, finding the depth, lifting the butt, and then the toes. Again, lifting the butt and toes. One more. Butt and toes. And with this, I, I actually find it a little bit more difficult to whew, speak and, um, and to show. So for the last one, uh, we're gonna actually attempt to do the lift of the whole thing again without the blocks and folding down, finding the depths, placing the palms and lifting all together. Release, fold down again, lift, release and lift. And the last one is gonna hold. I don't think I can hold more than five seconds today. <laughs> one, two, three, four, and five. <sighs> and done. Ta-da! I congratulate you. You just finished a full class of L-seat things. Let's maybe cool down, warm down, and do a little bit of um, some easy poses. I mean, it could be not easy if you are too sore today. And we're gonna place the palms hips above the knees ideally and we're gonna drop the chest down now from here the option to place a yoga block and drop the chest towards the yoga block chest or chin or to drop all the way down to place your forehead or chin or the, the chest oops i hope you hear me Okay, I'm gonna, in the sake of microphone, I'm gonna keep myself this way. And from here we want to tuck the table under and now draw the ribs down so they are not flaring out. And find a little bit of activation through the shoulders. And now release completely, dropping the chest down. Wait, let me move my microphone. Dropping the chest down. Oh, this feels so good. I'm breathing and releasing. Coming up to the low lunge now. We're gonna come into the regular low lunge where the knee has to be above the heel. This is not bad, but this is not crucial. So we're gonna stay here to open up through the front line Press the back toes into the mat, leave the back knee, maybe coming into the uh, cross lunge, how they call that, lowering all the way down, and then the knee. Let's do this one more time. A little bit of activation. We don't want to get sloppy, especially hypermobile people. And using the other leg now. Use my heel below the knee, tucking the back toe, Lifting the back knee, coming into the low, uh, high lunge, I guess, and lowering all the way down. Let's do this one more time. And down. Now, the last and probably favorite part of the whole practice is the twisting. Supine twisting. Placing your palms out, maybe if an option to place your palms facing down or facing up. And from here, we're gonna bring those knees towards your chest. <sighs> Making sure that the buttocks are still slightly on the floor. And now we're gonna 
let those knees drop towards the right and we're gonna look towards the left breathing deeply and not into the lower back we want to focus on our rib cage all of these practices i like to include a little bit of postural work i speak a lot but i'm gonna still drop some information bringing back to center and as you exhale dropping the other side so what i learned recently is that most of the shoulder problems are coming from the immobile rib cage or hypermobile rib cage i think it's still immobility when you're too mobile in one side and too immobile on the other side now coming back to center exhaling stretching your legs out preparing yourself for final and last pose shavasana please don't skip this part pause this video and hold this for five minutes this is your ability to relax this will help a lot to your parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous responses we want to drop into rest and digest response before going into the to-do list and our, continue with our day closing your eyes stay here for five minutes I'm gonna place a really nice smoothie music for you to relax relax your facial muscles your eyebrows your chin chin okay chin your jaws unclench your jaw roll your shoulders down away from your ears let your entire body to naturally fall as it falls breathing through the belly slowing down the heartbeat thank you for taking this class with me today see you next week